Good morning, children. So we have successfully completed the lesson, and now it's time for us to go for the graph. So to start with, we have nouns. So what do you mean by a noun? We have learned it in the classes earlier. What do we mean by a noun? So what do you mean by a noun? A noun is the name of a person, place, thing, quality, idea, etc. Okay. So a word which denotes the name of a person, a place, a thing, a quality, an idea, etc. is called a noun. So what's a noun? A noun is a name of a person, place, thing, quality or idea. Okay? So simply we say naming words are called nouns. Simply. But the exact meaning of a noun is a word that represents the name of a person, a place, a thing, a quality or an idea is called a noun. Okay. So what do you mean by a noun? A noun is the name of a person, place, thing, quality or an idea. Clear? Good. Now, what are the kinds of nouns? What are the what are the kinds of nouns? Nouns are broadly divided into two categories. Okay? Nouns are broadly divided into two categories. One is called concrete noun. The second is called abstract noun. Okay? So first one is called concrete noun. The second one is called abstract noun. So these are the to classifications of nouns. Now, what do you mean by a concrete noun? Concrete means what? Concrete. Something which is a strong and something that has a shape is called a concrete. So those nouns which have a shape means uh, we can see it. We can touch it. Okay? So those things which we can see and touch in simple terms we can say those things which we can see and touch are called concrete nouns. Those things we cannot touch and uh, see are called abstract nouns. So we said that earlier just now we said that we name persons. Isn't it? So person do they have a shape? Yeah, all persons have a shape, they have a body, they have legs, they have hands, they have head. We can see them, we can touch them. Isn't it? Place. Places also, no? We know when our village comes, when we are going somewhere. Or from our school, when we go to home, we know. So it has a concreteness. Then, things. For example, if I say pen, this is a pen. If I say paper, this become paper. Isn't it? So persons, places, things have a specific shape, a specific structure. We can touch them, we can see them. So these things are called concrete nouns. But some things are there, we cannot touch them. For example, uh, quality. Quality. For example, we say he is a good boy. 
So goodness is a quality. Goodness is a quality. Can you touch that goodness? Can you see the goodness? If the boy is not there, can we see, okay, the boy has gone, but his goodness is still there. Our rose, a rose flower. Okay, imagine this is a this is a flower. And this flower has a quality that is it's a beauty. Okay, so beauty is a quality that this flower has. If I take the flower off, do we have beauty over here? Or the color over here? So these are qualities and the qualities are those things which are, do not have a shape, we cannot touch them. Right? So such things are called abstract nouns. Right? So those things that we can touch and see like persons, places and things are called concrete nouns and those things which we cannot touch are called abstract nouns. Clear? Very good. Concrete nouns are again divided. Okay? So in concrete noun we have proper noun. We have a common noun. We have a Collective noun, we have a material noun. Okay, so when it comes to concrete noun, they are further divided as proper noun, common noun, collective noun, and material noun. So, what are the different categories of nouns? Proper noun, common noun, collective noun, material noun. Right? So, uh, let's see what they are one by one. Mm. Imagine I said the word Gandhi. Gandhi. So when we say the name Gandhi or Gandhiji, the, the figure, the image, the picture that comes to our mind is of a person, a lean person who has uh, only two pieces of cloth on his body, uh, bald headed, has a stick, isn't it? We usually call him Babuji. Okay? We do not think about anybody else in the world. Oh, from the lesson, for example, when we say uh, Virat Kohli, do we think about any other player? No. When we say Virat Kohli, we will think only about that particular person. We are not thinking about any other player like Ms. Dhoni or Daniel Vittori or Chris Gale or uh, Rose Taylor. No. Only Virat Kohli. Isn't it? And we say the match happened at the Feroz Shah Kotla Stadium. So Feroz Shah Kotla Stadium is the name of a particular stadium. Where is it located? Delhi. Again, Delhi is the name of a place. When we tell the name Delhi, we won't think about the city near our village or the town that we have near our village. Or places that are famous there are village like Hyderabad or Mumbai or Chennai or Calcutta or Bangalore. No, Delhi is Delhi. Isn't it? So, names like these, the names of a person or a place or thing, which is very particular. Very particular. So, such names are called proper noun. Means, they denote the name of a specific person or a thing. Okay? So they are specific names.
They are specific names. So proper nouns usually express specific names. When we uh, deal with, when we listen or when we say or when we hear or when we read a particular person's name or thing, we won't think about something else or somebody else, only that particular person, only that particular thing. Isn't it? So such names are called uh, proper noun or uh, they always denote specific names. Okay? Now, common noun. If I say teacher, if I say the word teacher, it can be any teacher in the school, isn't it? There are so many teachers in our school, no? There are so many teachers in our school, not only in our school, in other schools also. So when I say the word teacher, it can be any teacher in our school or any other schools. Or when I say the word boy, same, it can be the boys in our class, in our school, in our area, in our village, any boy. Isn't it? If I say the word girl, same thing. Hmm? So these are names, the speciality of these things are, these words are, these can be used for addressing anybody in that particular category. We can use the word teacher to address any teacher. It can be an LKG teacher, it can be a first grade teacher, it can be a second class teacher, it can be a tenth class teacher or it can be somebody who teaches anything. It can be a music teacher, it can be a dancing teacher, isn't it? Huh? Computer teacher. So that is a word which can be used for addressing anybody who is a teacher. Okay, now boy, any boy in the world can be called by the name boy. So the words like these which are used commonly for a large group is called a common noun. So they are common names we say. They are common names. Right? Now, collective noun. So, collective noun means a group of things. A group of things. Uh, for example, if I uh, show you this. So, this actually has keys. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So a group of keys are kept together. Isn't it? A group of keys are kept together. And this group of keys we call what? What do we call? A bunch of keys. Isn't it? A bunch of keys or uh, grapes, fruit. A group of fruits hanging on a single uh, stem. We call it a bunch of grapes. If we have a group of sticks, if we have a group of sticks tied together, do what we call it? We call it a bundle of sticks. We call it a bundle of sticks. If we have a set of papers, a set of paper, we call it a bundle of paper. Okay, a group of fish. Do you know what do we call a group of fish? Yeah, 
we call a group of fish a school a school of fish so words like these lions a pack of lions cattle a herd of cattle herd h e r d herd okay so these kinds of words which represents not one animal or one thing but a group of things together is called a is called a collective noun right so the words which represents a group of things together or a group of nouns together is called a collective noun so we can say it as group names right now the next one is material noun what do you mean by material noun what do you mean by material material simply means something else but the things na okay now we use different kinds of things we use different kinds of things for example i have a pen right i have a knife or i have a book with me so we use a lot of things but the thing that we use is actually made up of something else isn't it so things that we use for example we have a pen here this pen is made of what yeah the pen is made up of plastic the pen is made up of plastic if i think about this particular knife we have a plastic and then a iron metal part inside it na no? is it so plastic it is one thing then iron is used to for making it If I think about this particular book, what is this made up of? A book made up of paper. Book is made up of paper. If I think about this particular vase, this vase, flower vase. So what is used for making this vase? Yeah, we use. mud clay is it now look at the door you have a door there or you have bed there you have table there what do we use to make these things or with what is the bed or the door or some other parts of your house made a table or a chair yes we use a wood okay so what is the speciality of these things the things like plastic iron or some other metals also then uh, paper clay then we use wool cotton then uh, wood so all these things are used to for making some other thing isn't it we use plastic for making a pen your plates may be made up of plastic the buckets that we use in our house are made up of plastics we have plastic chairs we have uh, uh, the dress hangers are made up of plastics is it just look around yourself in your house how many things are there what are bottles are there is it so a lot many things are made up of plastic is it so is it possible for you to just look around and list down the things that you have at your home which is made up of plastic hmm? now the second thing iron so i said knife is made up of iron scissors are made up of iron are these the things sometimes we can see some parts of the chair is made up of iron the window grills are there window grills they are made up of iron so just like plastic iron is also used for making different things then we have paper 
the morning newspaper, the different kinds of books we have, then the dictionaries and all those kinds of things. Huh? Tissue papers are there. Everything is one or other uh, kind of a paper. Isn't it? Then clay. We have clay pots. Water pots are there, no? Which we use to keep water inside. It will be very cool. The water inside the pot will be very cool, naturally cool. Then artifacts are kinds of things. Then tea cups are also there, which is made up of clay. So clay is used for making different things. Wood. The doors are made of wood. The windows are made of wood. The table is made of wood. Chairs are made of wood. Bed is made of wood. Huh? The cupboard doors are made of wood. So these things we use for making other different things. So these things are known as materials with which other things are made. Clear? So the name of a thing which is used for making other things is called a material now. The name of a thing which is used for making other things are called a material now. So what do you mean by material now? The name of a thing which is used for making other things. Bed is not a material now. Bed is a common now. But wood which is used for making that bed is a material now. Clear? So, noun is the name of a person, place, a thing or a quality. They are of two types of concrete noun and abstract noun. So, uh, concrete nouns are those nouns which we can see, which have a structure, which have a shape. Okay. There are four types, proper noun, common noun, collective noun and a material noun. So, proper noun is the name of a specific person, place or a thing. Proper noun denotes the name of a specific person, place or a thing. Common nouns are names which are used for common, in common, which can be used in a common. Uh, collective nouns are group names. Okay. Uh, a team of players like that. Material nouns are names of things with which we use, which, with which we make other things like gold is used for making some ornaments or a silver is used for making ornaments steel is used for making different kinds of utensils that we use in the house okay so these kinds of things come under material now right now what is an abstract noun so we have said that abstract noun actually denotes to qualities because that is something that we cannot see we cannot see abstract nouns because they do not have any particular shape. This abstract noun always depends on a concrete noun to exist. Okay, I said now if we have a flower and we say beauty, beauty, beauty is an abstract noun and we say beauty of this particular flower. If I remove this flower, will the beauty remain there? No. Right? Or if I say whiteness, the board, white color, whiteness of the board is a quality of this board. If I remove this board, will we get that whiteness over there? No. So whiteness exists only if the board exists. If there is no board, then there is no whiteness. So abstract nouns always depend on a concrete noun for its existence. Right? Abstract nouns always depend on a concrete noun for its existence. And what are the things that come under this abstract noun? We get the quality, we get the feelings. happiness, sadness. If I am happy, as long as I am here, the people over here or this area will have that happiness. 
If I go, will the happiness remain here? No, it will come along with me. So happiness, sadness, a kind of feelings are abstract nouns. Then the actions. <laughs> laughing. Laughing. Laughing is an action which is an abstract noun because if I do not laugh, then nothing happens. Nobody can see me. Isn't it? So laughter, crying, these kinds of actions are abstract nouns and then uh, ideas. So ideas, actions and these kinds of things are something that we cannot uh, see, touch but we can enjoy and feel. Okay, so such kinds of things are called uh, abstract nouns. Hmm? Now, abstract nouns usually come from the adjective form of it. Abstract nouns are nouns that usually gets derived from the adjective part. For example, uh, as I said earlier, he is a good boy. He is a good boy. In that, good is an adjective, isn't it? The word good is describing the word boy, isn't it? So the word good is describing the word boy. So this is a word of description or an adjective. So when you make a noun from this good, we get a goodness. Isn't it? So goodness is a noun form that we get from the adjective good. Clear? So such nouns are always abstract nouns and we can hardly see them. Clear? So I will uh, leave the board for a while for you to have a look at it and after that we will uh, continue with the class. So children, we have seen the different types of nouns and in that we had this thing called a common noun. Okay, so what do I mean by common noun? A common noun is a word which denotes a name of a person, place or a thing in common. Like uh, the examples what we have seen is a, a boy or a girl or we can say city or a book. So these words are examples for a common noun. Now, uh, we use an article a or an before a common noun. A or an is an article which we use before a common noun. A is used before a consonant sound. The consonant sound means a, uh, no, which is not a vowel sound. For example, we say a boy or a girl, a book. Okay, it goes like that. And we use an in front of a vowel sound, an apple or an orange or an umbrella. Right? So a or an is usually used in a common noun and that is used based on the letter that comes after it. If it is a vowel sound, if it is a vowel sound, not letter, vowel sound, we use an before it. Okay? So an is used before a vowel sound and a is used before a consonant sound. Right? So this is uh, about the common noun. And in common noun, we have one more feature. We call it singular plural. So another feature of a common noun that we need to learn is whether they are countable or uncountable. What do you mean by countable noun and what do you mean by uncountable noun? Say uh, some things we can count. For example, if I have some pens in my hand, we can simply count it. Now, one, two, three, four, five. 
So we can count them. But some things in around us we cannot count. For example, if we have water, is it possible for me to count one water, two water, three water, four water? I counted one pen, two pen, three pen, four pen. In the same way, is it possible for us to count water? Hmm? Or is it possible for us to count uh, things like uh, milk? I need one milk, I need two milks. Is it possible for us to say it like that? No. So this is where uh, we got the difference between a countable noun and an uncountable noun. So countable nouns are those nouns which we can count or we can say able to be counted. So what do you mean by a countable noun? A countable nouns are those nouns which are able to be counted. Right? Countable nouns are those nouns which are able to be counted. It means we can count them one by one. <coughs> Clear? And there are some nouns which we cannot count. Or we say they are unable to be counted. For example, we have, you know, uh, abstract nouns. For example, if you say, I feel pain. So pain is an abstract noun. Is it possible for us to tell that I feel one pain or I feel five pains? Laughter is an action. So is it, for, is it possible for us to tell that he laughs two or he laughed three? Is it possible? Isn't it? So we cannot say count, we cannot count some nouns in the world. Right? Furniture. If there is only one chair, it's furniture. If there are ten chairs, that is a furniture. Okay? So, <clears throat> so, uh, we need to check with whether these things are able to be counted or not and based on that we divide this. Some things we can count and they are known as countable nouns. Some things we cannot count, they are known as uncountable nouns. <coughs> okay? Ajay. Okay, now. Continue from the. This is one. This is that. But she not go to some other not cheap. Me share. Me Enjoy. Okay, so those counts which we can count are known as the countable nouns. Those which we cannot count are called the uncountable nouns. Now, <clears throat> there are some nouns which have only singular forms. Okay, there are some nouns which has only singular forms. There is no plural form for that. Okay, no plural. For example, if we say juice or uh, beauty uh, or uh, luggage, then uh, honesty, honesty. So these kinds of words, speciality is that they do not have a plural form. They exist only in their singular form. Okay? They exist only in their singular form. Right? Now, some has only plural forms. No singular that's very important. Okay, some nouns has some nouns have no 
singular forms they have only plural forms so for example we say trousers so what do you mean by trousers trousers means pants pants we wear na pants so pants pants is the word we used to call it not a pant because if you tell pant it has to be only one leg there is no second leg okay another word we have is spectacles 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 means what the glasses we wear okay the glasses we wear if i say spectacle it has to be only one glass the second glass is missing the second glass is a missing okay so is it possible for us to use only one glass no we cannot use a one glass uh, piece for reading or uh, to have a clear view on the other side another thing is uh, scissors we usually say scissor no scissor is a wrong usage we have to say scissors scissors have two parts na there will be two parts one we will be going like this uh nenelli scissors is going to stand e part touch it Because I got to buy. See, this is a scissors. Scissors means it has two parts. One is this thing. The second is this. Okay. So this is one. This is a second. If we say scissor, it has only one part. Only this part. This part is not there. So is it possible for us to use this only one part to cut? a sheet of paper or a piece of cloth or something like that no so both these handles together make a scissor and that has to be said that this has to be said that scissors not a scissor is it clear so scissors is such a word which has a no singular form okay usually we use a structure called a pair of before such kind of things a pair of scissors a pair of spectacles a pair of trousers like that <clears throat> okay now rewind it once again so countable nouns and uncountable nouns are two categories of common nouns countable nouns refers to those nouns which we can count easily like 1 2 3 4 uncountable nouns are those nouns which you cannot be counted we cannot uh, count them right so for countable nouns we can use examples like a uh, pen or uh, pencils or books etc uncountable nouns are uh, uh, laughter or uh, beauty means uh, the qualities feelings actions especially abstract noun always come under uncountable nouns okay so uh, some nouns has a speciality that is they always have a singular form only there is no plural form for them there is no separate plural form for them the words like juice weather intelligence bravery uh, then uh, beauty luggage honesty these kinds of word are examples for those nouns which only has a singular form but no plural form some nouns have only plural forms and there is no singular form for them means we cannot use them in a singular way 
So they are words like a trousers, scissors, spectacles, right? So they cannot be used in a singular form and they usually come with an addition of a pair of. So we always say a pair of trousers. So I have got a new pair of spectacles. I have got a new pair of spectacles. See, this pair of scissors is very good. This pair of scissors is very good. Okay, so this usage, a pair of is added before these nouns which has a, this particular drop down. They cannot be used in a singular form. Okay, so now we will go on to the exercises once. Okay.